All right, let's see. Hello, redesigners. It's Monday um, at noon EST. I was thinking for a second it was Thursday because guess what? Usually I'm here on Thursdays, but it's Monday. And um, yeah, I switched my um, lives um, to Mondays in the redesign group for the month of November. So yeah, um, here we are. It's Monday. I hope you're all having a great Monday. Today, we have got a couple of drawers that we are going to get all redesigned out. Um, we're gonna do, let's see how much we could fit into this live. <coughs> I've got quite a bit of things I'm doing to these drawers, so um, let me show you the drawers. Um, hello everybody, if you are hopping on, say hello. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. So. These are my draws. Um, I guess I could turn them to face you so you can see better what I'm doing. So um, these are two drawers out of a um, little Bombay end table that I am working on. So I poured a epoxy top for it last night and I'm super excited to work on the drawers. They are um, painted in aubergine, which is an eggplant dark purple color. And then I blended in some like soft black uh, called Midnight Sky into the edges. And then I um, did a black glaze to kind of make the details pop just a little bit more. And uh, let's see, so that's where I'm at. Oh, and on this drawer, I did a raised stencil. It's very low profile because I wanted it to be subtle. So it's not super duper, you know, um, it's not a super deep stenciling, but that's actually a stencil I designed myself and applied and I ran some, um, you can use, uh, for raised stenciling, you can use 3D fiber paste or you can use spackle or you can use uh, mud. You can use, there's a variety of different things that you can use for raised stenciling. So I just wanted that one to be kind of low key, you know, um, not super, you know, not a whole lot of depth, but just enough to where you can see it fairly subtly. So that's draw number two. We're gonna go ahead and start on drawer number one, which is the top drawer. I'm gonna turn it this way so that you can see it right side up. Okay, so purple painted, black glazed drawer here. Um, I did seal this, okay? So I sealed it in gator hide. You can use whatever water-based sealer you want, or you can do what we're about to do directly to the paint. So the reason why I sealed it is because we're going to be using some foils um, some stick and style stencil, and then after that, we're gonna be using some icing paste. So we're using all three of these products on this one drawer, just in the front. You know, we're not even to the sides yet. So, um, thank you, you should see, I'm gonna post pictures of the pour later, you should see it, it's turned out so amazing. It's, it's, oh, it's probably my favorite pour I've ever done, definitely for sure. But, uh, you know, eight layers later, um, anyway, so let's go and get started on this drawer number one. So first, um, the reason why I sealed it is because we're gonna be using foil and icing paste, which I like to do as my last step. I don't like to seal the foil just because it kind of dulls the sparkle a little bit and I don't like to dull anybody's sparkle, you know what I mean? So um, that's why I do it last. You can seal the foil um, with like a gloss or semi-gloss sealer, water-based sealer. Uh, but I went ahead and sealed this in Gator Hide because I love me some Gator Hide and um, I'm going to do my next two steps as my last step. So, oh, first we're going to start with our stick and style stencil, okay? So stick and style stencil rolls. Um, this one is in leopard pattern, my favorite. And um, stick and style stencil rolls, if you're not familiar with them, they are rolls of adhesive stencil. Um, these ones, the newer ones are about six inches in height. The older ones are about four inches and they're sticky. So you can, um, help prevent, you know, that dreaded squishy bleed underneath your stenciling and you get a nice crisp, clean stencil. I love these because, um, they're both reusable and they're disposable. So after I'm done with this, I will just toss it. But if you want to, you can clean them with, you know, a scrubby soap or mineral spirits, or um, I see, you know, some Dawn dish soap or baby wipe, but you do want to stick it on something so that you can preserve the sticky back and then just cannot kind of gently clean off whatever. Or you can just let it dry up and reuse it. That's usually what I do, or I toss it. 
um, whatever floats your boat. So I'm gonna cut a piece that's gonna fit right over the top. See this um, kind of offset or um, raised inset kind of section? We're gonna be working on that um, surface area, okay? So I'm gonna try not to get product on my edges here, um, the border. So these can be a little sticky, and if you've prepped well, it should not pull your paint up. Luckily, I've never had it pull my paint up, but I like to be cautious, and I do the old um, rub it on my pants first trick so that it's not too, too sticky. I did sand this piece first, so I'm not super worried about it, but you can never be too sure. Um, it's still gonna be plenty sticky. So I'm gonna go ahead and fit my leopard print on my little inset area here. And um, some designs you wanna make sure you have perfectly straight, leopard print or, uh, you know, cheetah, whatever you wanna call it, is not one of those designs that, you know, if it's not perfectly straight, you're not gonna, you know, really notice. So I just wanna gently rub that on in place and I'm gonna go ahead and cut off what I, you know, the rest of the roll. I won't be needing the rest, so let's see, we'll cut off put it in um, the box. where the box go? There it is. I like to put them back in the box so it feels new every time I open it. Ha! Um, okay, so once I've got my stick and style stencil roll nice and pressed on there well, here's what we're gonna do. We are going to apply some adhesive to our stenciling and let it dry to attack. You can use spray adhesive. I like Elmer's or Aline's Tacky. Um, I'm brushing on this adhesive. I think this is... Um, I think this is Artsyville from Artistic Painting Studio. Uh, Redesign or Prima Marketing doesn't have an adhesive, brush on adhesive or spray adhesive that I know about, so that's why we're using this. And this is for foils that can be a little bit difficult to release um, onto your surface, uh, you know, more so than leaf. Leaf sticks a little bit better. So I like to use this Artsyville adhesive because it's really, really sticky and it stays sticky until you put something on it so you don't have to worry about it drying too much. It's gonna dry to attack no matter what. So we're gonna go ahead and do this first. That way um, we can let it dry to attack while I work on the rest of the, um, the other drawer. So I'm just gonna kind of brush. I don't want too much, but I'm gonna get some on my brush. Just a chip brush is what I'm using. And I'm gonna kind of wipe the excess off on the sides because you don't want too, too much. You don't want it to stay wet. You want it to dry to attack and not take forever. And you can tell brushing it on that it's pretty sticky. That's why I like this kind for foils. So um, we're gonna brush all over our stencil, our adhesive. Um, I wanna try to not get it on my very, very edges, that border there. I should have taped them off, but I didn't. Maybe I will after this. But we're gonna um, brush this all over our surface that we are going to foil. And then I'm gonna set it in front of a fan while we work on the other drawer. And then we'll come back to it and apply our foils and our icing paste. So my vision for this piece is um, kind of purple, romantic, sexy even, and maybe just a touch of goth, okay? So that's where I'm going with this piece. Um, the body is gonna be painted this eggplant with black glaze as well, or aubergine. and. Um, the top is a really pretty paint pour that I did with all kinds of different colors. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. It's Every time I get to work on a piece that's not a custom, I get pretty excited because I can do, you know, crazy things. All right, so that is covered. Our stencil is good and brushed on with the adhesive, not too thick, not too thin. We're gonna let it dry to attack. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it on a fan just to help speed that process up. It usually takes about 10 to 15 minutes to dry to attack if you haven't put it on too thickly. So we're gonna set that aside um, on our fan and we're gonna do draw number two while we wait for that to dry to attack. Um, drying to attack just means it's sticky, not wet, not all the way dry, just sticky. Tacky is sticky. Okay, so here is our draw number two. So I've already done our raised stenciling, painted, glazed, sealed with gator hide or whatever water-based sealer you prefer. <coughs> and for this drawer, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dry brush on um, decor waxes. So 
Decor wax from Redesign with Prima are, they're like gilding wax, they're oil-based. Um, they are, they come in all the different metallics and iridescence and all that. I'm gonna use um, gold and like a copperish color. So gold is eternal. And then um, these two, so there's meteor showers and element. They're both kind of coppery. So I'm gonna, I can't decide which one I wanna use. I'm just gonna pick one and use that. We're gonna do gold and copper. We're gonna dry brush it onto our raised stenciling um, to kind of make those details pop and shimmer just a little bit. So let me go ahead and open, let's see, let's open element first. And if that is good, we will just use that. So I'm thinking they're both fairly similar in color. So I think they would both probably work. So when you open your decor wax, you should have a little, oh, let's see if we got, you should have one of these little discs on top. I've always thrown those away and I recently just, you know, well, not recently, but uh, in the past year or so, I realized that uh, you want to keep those, okay? You want to keep those and um, put them back on to keep your decor wax from drying out. Now, the new decor waxes are going to come in tubes, like toothpaste squeezy type tubes. And um, so that will eliminate, you know, the drying out from, you know, sitting open like this. But there are lots of these tins floating around. So if you get one of these tins... Keep your uh, little disc, I like to put it in the lid so I don't toss it on accident or lose it. So we're gonna put that in the lid. We're gonna stick with this one and the Eternal, which is gold. So I'm gonna go ahead and open both of those. A uh, little tip if your decor wax does start to dry out, you can add a little bit of min mineral spirits at a time and um, stir it up with like a palette knife and bring that back to consistency, okay? So there's our Eternal gold and our, what did I go with meteor showers? our uh, element, sorry, we went with element. So we're gonna be using element and eternal. And um, I'm gonna be dry brushing, like I said, onto the details. So I just like to use this stiff art brush, um, fairly stiff. That way you're not getting it down into the you know details as much. You wanna kinda lightly brush it on the tops to make those details pop. So I added a dark uh, black glaze to try to get in those little crevices. And I'm gonna be using the, the decor wax to, to do the tops, so for more of a highlight. So um, I like to use a uh, about one inch stiff-ish art brush. And let's go ahead and start with the Eternal because I said so. So I'm just gonna load up my brush just a little bit. It only takes a little bit. You don't need a lot of decor wax at all. These cans last forever. I use them on like every project and somehow they've lasted me so long. I keep thinking this one's on its way out, but it's like I get more and more out of it. So just a little bit on your brush to start. Wipe the excess off on the side of your can if you want. And we're just going to start dry brushing our details. And um, this is not a perfect process, okay? So if you get some places, you know, other than just the tops of the details, that's okay. So I'm, you see how I've got my brush to the side here? Um, that helps me just stick to the tops of the details. I'm gonna actually um, move my tripod down a little bit so you can see better how I'm doing this. Let's see, boom, let's move you down. And there we go. Hmm, okay, there we go. Is that better? Is that a better view? Um, I'm sorry if, oh. Yes, such a mom. Because I said so. That's my, um, you know, I need a tattoo that says that because I said so. Okay, sorry if I'm missing questions. I like to work, worky work, less scrolly scroll. So see how I'm just gently from the side, kind of almost, it's almost like I'm sketching. If you've ever sketched something with like a pencil, you just kind of lightly, you know, sketch it. That's sort of what I'm doing. Just barely brushing that gold on to the tops of my details. Okay, so we got our gold. I'm gonna kind of go at a diagonal here. Okay, and then I'm gonna switch to my um, element, which is more of like a copperish bronze. Okay, so I'm gonna load that up gently, lightly. You don't want too much on your brush, okay? Sort of like you're applying some eyeshadow, just a little bit. Okay, it's easier to add than it is to take away, you know, that whole 
that whole saying. So we're gonna do the same. We're gonna slightly overlap with our gold um, so that they kind of blend together just a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. So again, from the side, we're just gonna kind of brush on very gently our element. And I'm trying to decide if I want to kind of go around the corners of the drawer a little bit. I think I probably will. Okay, so just gently. You can always add more. It's a little harder to take away. So I'm going to add a little bit around the corners here just to kind of round out this little... I don't know, a uh, rectangular shape. Kind of define it, I guess, is the better word. Define our little inset area on our drawer here. Okay, now oh, let's get this corner up here too. Give it a little bit of love up there. Oh, and let's kind of randomly put a little bit of element throughout our, our um, gold here, eternal. I want it to have just a kind of, a little bit of an aged kind of look, you know what I'm saying? So, so that's why we're not perfectly brushing on and painting in our um, ray stenciling. I just want kind of a aged appearance, you know, like not uh, slightly distressed. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and switch back to our um, element. I'm sorry. Uh, eternal. Oh man, I just got gilding wax or decor wax all over, all over Tupac. It's all right. Everybody loves uh, a little bit of decor. Ooh, I had some on my sleeve right here. If you get a little bit of um, wax where you don't want it and you can't wipe it off right away, um, or don't wipe it off right away, you can get some clear wax and go over it and use that as kind of an eraser. I need to pay more attention. I must have decor wax on my sleeve. Anyways, can you see? Um, where we're going with this. Is that a good enough view? See how it's highlighting my raised stenciling just so much that, you know, just enough to make it really pop. To make it pop. Oh, uh, the stencil I used is one that I cut myself. So, um, there wasn't a stick and style that I wanted I did use, I'm going to use a stick and sell on the other drawer, but there wasn't a design that I personally wanted to use on the second drawer, so that's why I cut my own out of um, adhesive stencil vinyl, and I used that for my raised stenciling, so that is actually a CC Restyled Original. I um, redesigned with Prima has amazing stencils, however, they are doing away with the large stencils, and I think think if, I, if I'm not wrong I believe they're only keeping the stick and styles which is a double-edged sword because I do love me some stick and style stencils believe that they're my favorite but I also love me some large stencils so um, I'm kind of sad not gonna lie I'm really bummed that they're um, doing away with them for now but that means get them all you can if you go on Etsy and search you know large you know uh, Prima stencils or redesign with Prima stencils and you find the large ones, you better get them. Get them while you can. If you see them, get them. Because before long, they will be gone. And I don't know if they are ever coming back. I hope so. But I would assume they'll be different styles, if so. And, you know, I'm not really positive on that. So here we are. Okay, we're going to continue on just brushing, dry brushing on our decor wax. With our little uh, firm stiff-ish brush or art brush you can use a chip brush a lot of times if I'm dry brushing with paint I use a chip brush a cheapy one for some reason those cheapy chip brushes dry brush so well um, but I'm using this this is actually a blue ice brush from um, dynasty is the name of the company they're pretty awesome they clean up really well so Okay, we're gonna just keep going a little bit longer on the dry brushing and then we'll switch over to our other drawer and um, I'll show you what we're gonna do for that treatment on the other draw. Cause I think you get the hint, right? I'm kind of 
going back and forth between the gold and the copper and kind of just blending them ever so much. Dry brushing them on to our deets. Okay, got me? You got me? You picking up what I'm putting down here? All right, let's do one more real quick run with the copper. And then um, we'll switch gears here. Okay, so the, um, uh, I keep calling it copper, but it's meteor showers, which is I think supposed to be more of a bronze, but it looks copper to me, okay? Copper, bronze, you know, whatever. So just a little bit loaded up on a brush, wipe off the excess, and gently want to just brush our details. Just like so, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect unless you want it to be, in which case I would get a much more precise method and brush. But I'm just kind of, I don't know, giving some age, personality, and bling bling to our skull heads here. Kind of mixing it in with the gold a little bit. You know, variety is the spice of life. Am I right? Okay, so. All right, you get where I'm going with this, right? I'll give you a little close up and then we'll move on to draw number two, or actually draw number one that we um, brushed our adhesive on. It should be dried to attack by now. I have it on the fan, so there is that. And you don't have to do it on a raised stencil. You can do this on carvings, moldings, whatever detail your piece has. So check that out. Is that pretty? Pretty sparkly, right? Am I right? What do you think of using two different colors? Do you like the, the two different ones or would you just stick with one? Eh, it depends on the piece. Sometimes I like both. I probably will um, touch up these eyes a little bit and kind of add some purple back into these eyes so you can really see those eye sockets. See how though on the middle one you can really see the eye sockets? That one I need to kind of touch up so that you can see the eye sockets better on that one. But you know, that's neither here nor there. Let's go ahead and move on back to our draw here. Let's see, dry to attack. Yes, it is dry to attack. So in case you're just tuning in or you missed um, when we got this drawer ready, what we did was we took our stick and style stencil in the leopard print pattern and um, I took some brush on adhesive, foil adhesive, and I brushed it onto our stencil. So now we're gonna go ahead and remove our stencil. Um, I'm gonna keep this, okay? Remember I said the stick and styles are both reusable and also disposable. I'm gonna keep this because we're gonna use it one more time for this drawer after we get our foil on there. And then after I'm done with it, I will toss it. Okay, so real quick, um, while I have that, oh gosh, while I have that stencil off, I'm gonna go ahead and tape around these edges here because I don't wanna get product, <coughs> excuse me, on these edges. I should have done it before I adhesive, br brushed my adhesive, but I didn't, I forgot. So I'm just gonna tape off these edges real quick because I don't want those to have icing paste or foil on them. They already have a little bit of adhesive now. So tape them off super easy, real quick. Boom, just painter's tape, one inch painter's tape is fine. Or you can just be really careful and not get product on them, but I'm not careful, I'm messy. I be sloppy sometimes. All right, so boom, easy as pie. So now we have our leopard print glue slash adhesive, whatever you wanna call it, laid down. So now we're gonna use our foils. And here I've got a redesign with Prima Relic Copper. Okay, I've got uh, Stardust and I've got Prima Marketing Foil Delic, which is all these crazy patterns. I can't decide which one I wanna use, so I'm gonna use them all. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start with, uh, let's start with Relic Copper. I'm gonna go ahead and open them all though. So Relic Copper to me looks a little bit like an aged, <coughs> excuse me, an aged brass, but it is a little coppery. So I'm, it comes with a few sheets. I'm only gonna pull out one for now. I only need one. Um, let's see, there's four sheets in, one, two, three, four, five, six sheets in here. That's a lot of, that's a lot of foil. I'm gonna pull out one 
And if I'm doing a small section, I can just cut how much I need and roll up the rest and put it back in the tube. But I'm not sure exactly how much I'm gonna use, so I'm just gonna use it like this. I've got my um, transfer tool. You can use a popsicle stick, you can use a transfer stick, you can use a credit card, you can use a plastic spoon, whatever you want to rub on or burnish your foil. So let's just start, oh, let's start in the middle here. Let's be crazy. Okay, so I'm gonna rub it. Um, Alexa, play the next song. What is this garbage? <gasps> I don't know if you guys can hear my Alexa, but she'd be confused sometimes. <laughs> All right, so I'm rubbing on my foil with my transfer tool or credit card or spoon, or whatever you got to rub it on with. Yeah, Alexa. All right, so we're rubbing it on and I'm gonna do little patches of each color on different sections so we have some variety. Cause you remember what I said? Variety is the spice of life. And I'm indecisive. I like all the things, so that's really the real reason. All right, so once you got it good and rubbed on, or burnished is a fancy word for rub on. Uh, a little firm with the pressure, not quite as hard as a decor transfer, but maybe, maybe about the same. Then we're gonna rip it off like a Band-Aid, okay? And look how pretty that is. Oh my God, I love foiling. I love foiling things because it's just so sparkly and pretty, look at that. Mm, 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 mm. Um, my glue here, I used Artsyville brush on adhesive from Artistic Painting Studio. <laughs> Um, you can use spray adhesive like Elmer's or Arlene's Tacky, anything that will dry to a tack. I like this kind because it's super tacky and foil can be a little bit difficult to release from that clear sheet. So that's why I like to use this one for foil because it's super sticky. Let's go ahead and move on to our foil delic, okay? So you can see all the crazy colors in this one. I'm not gonna use all the crazy colors. I'm gonna use, oh, where did that little guy go? That's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use this one because it's got black and gold and silver, kind of neutral, right? I don't want to use blues and pinks because my, my piece, uh, the top I poured for it's very colorful. So I'm kind of trying to stick with golds or metallics and neutrals on the body. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of that one. Let's do it right here, right next to it. We'll just keep going back and forth and working our way out on the draw. So rub it on just like you would a transfer, a little firm, but not so firm that you rip the sheet, scratch your paint. So let's just rub on parts of it. I don't want perfect shapes. I want it kind of natural looking. Okay, and then rip her off like a Band-Aid. Now, you see there may be some parts that don't uh, release as well as others. I don't know if you can see that right here. Right here it didn't release as well. So I'm, I can just throw my foil back on over that and re-rub it. I probably just didn't rub that part very Hard. So we're gonna re-rub over those parts that did not release super good and rub it and rip it off like a band-aid. Boom. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next foil, which is Stardust. Stardust is like a brushed gold. Um, it's it is shiny, but it's a little more matte, at least on the backing paper. It's a little more matte, so more more sheets. I think they each come with six. We just need one for now. Okay, so let's pick, let's just keep going. Let's go, mm, mm, let's go here. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna rub it on. And now I'm gonna grab my transfer tool and give it some firm rub, like just like a transfer. These foils come in so many different colors. There's uh, like a metallic pink, metallic blue, holographic, glittery. I mean, uh, let's see. Some of them are under the redesign line and some of them are under just Prima marketing. So if you are searching for the foils on Etsy, I would just put in Prima foils and they will all come up for you. There's all, there's so many different, there's even like a shiny black, a metallic black foil, which would have been really pretty on this. Um, but I don't have that one, so we're going with bling bling here. Okay, so rub it on, and then when you're done uh, rubbing, rip it off like a Band-Aid. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and move on over here, this side. Let's get this side, rub it on, rub or burnish, whatever you, you know you prefer. If you're fancy, you can say burnish, 
But in, for all intents and purposes, burnish means to rub. Firmly, and you can kind of see it release from the sheet a little bit, so you kind of know when to stop rubbing on, on some of the foils. Not all of them, but some of them you can see. Rip it off like a Band-Aid. Do this little spot right here we missed. Okay, boom. All right, beautiful. And let's see. Let's go ahead and move back to our foil delic pattern. And let's just go ahead and do this whole end cap over here. Okay, rub it on and then take our stick. Boom, 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 boom. Rubbing, 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 rubbing. And rip it off like a Band-Aid. Boom. All right, so now we just got this little corner over here. Let's just go ahead and do a little bit of foil delic, and then we'll do the rest in our relic copper and um, move on. Okay, so we're just going to do this little bit over here. Um... You can do all one color foil or one pattern of foil. I just like variety. I love variety. I feel like it using the different shades and different patterns creates movement, texture, um, rhythm, you know, like personality, all the fun things. Rip it off like a bandaid. Okay, so next, let's see, we're gonna go back to relic, wait, no. No, Relic Copper was this one. So we're gonna do this in, in Relic Copper here. And then, um, hmm. Let's throw that on there, just like that. And you can save your foil sheets if there's still foil. If you can still see foil on your sheet, you should keep it because you can always use scraps, you know, to rub on, you know, small parts of projects or ones like this where you're using multiple different foils, you know. Waste not, want not, right? Okay, so rub on this corner and then we'll move on. Woo, this is making me hot. I'm in my workout for the day. We might have to, oh, sorry. Gotta uh, change my shirt real quick. Take this off. Getting hot in here when you're doing all that rubbing. All right, a little bit more and then we will move on to the next step. So, um, got my last little section rubbed on, rip it off like a band-aid. Okay, boom, so look how pretty that is. Mm, mm, mm. It's pretty, right? It's so sparkly. So, see the sparkles? Ooh, I kinda wanna leave it like that. It's so pretty and so sparkly, but it's a little bit, you know, it's a little loud. So we're gonna add one more layer on this, just to tone it down just a hair and add a little bit of color um, the rest of the body of this piece is going to be fairly plain, just purple with the black glaze. So the drawers are where it's at. Okay, party on the drawers. Party on the drawers, business on the cabinet. Whoop. Okay, so now, remember that piece of stick and style stencil that we saved? We're going to bust that back out real quick. And what I'm going to do is, <coughs> excuse me, I am going to, you know, give it the old leg sticky leg treatment one more time just to get rid of some more of that tack because I'm gonna lay it back on here and I don't want it to pull up, you know, anything. Um, I'm gonna do my best to um, find, let's see, it was either this way or this way. I'm gonna do my best to, there we go, find where it was. So this is where it was laid when I applied my adhesive, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna offset it just a little bit. So what that means is I'm gonna move it about an eighth of an inch or so you know, to the left or right or up or down. I just want to, um, kind of like a shadow. Think of it like a shadow. I'm shadowing my stencil here. So lined it up where it was and then offset it just a hair. So I'm offsetting it about an eighth of an inch um, down into the right, um, you're backwards, so. And I'm, you're backwards and I'm upside down. So maybe the, in real life, I'm putting it to the right and down, okay? 
So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a layer of <coughs> icing paste. And you're probably thinking, man, that was so pretty and sparkly. Why is she doing that? Ah, oh. well, I just wanna add a little bit more color into the drawers because um, there's a lot of metallic going on on both drawers and I wanna tone it down just a little bit and add in some more color and some texture. So the icing paste is gonna do that. I picked um, amethyst. I think it's, yeah, magic amethyst. And this is um, icing paste from the Finnebear line in from Prima Marketing. And icing paste is uh, like a very thick pudding-like texture and consistency. And it's they're all metallics and they come in all kinds of different colors. I'm using Amethyst Magic um, because it's purple and I got a lot of purples and peaches happening on my um, on my piece on the top that I did. The pour has purples. Um, peaches, corals. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to cover this entire stencil because I do love my foil and I want some of it to pop and show. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to um, fill in parts of my stencil with the icing paste. So icing paste is metallic. See how sparkly it is? It dries even more sparkly um, than this. Uh, let's see. And I'm going to apply that with a spread pal, which is um, you can use a palette knife or a trowel or whatever you got. I like to use these spread pals. <coughs> these are from Redesign with Prima, and they're little silicone jobbies, so they're flexible. They're easy to clean. You can just wait till the product dries up and peel it off. That's usually what I do. Um, but they're good for spreading on, you know, mud, icing paste, chalk paste, whatever. So let's see, I'm gonna load up my, I, my spread pal just a little bit. I don't wanna get too carried away with this step. So on my offset stencil, I definitely want to um, kind of fill in some areas um, with just enough to give it a little purple sparkle, okay? I'm not gonna fill in my whole stencil because I want my foil to show. I love my foil, it's beautiful and I want it to show. So I'm just gonna pick some little areas kind of around corners and edges Similar to how I would choose where I'm going to distress a piece, you know, like sand to distress. I'm going to, you know, use a similar type concept for applying my um, icing paste. So I would, you know, probably do some organic type shapes with my paste. Um, let's see, maybe, let's see. I'm going to come down here a little bit. But I definitely want to get my sparkle from my foil. So I don't want to cover that all up. Part of the reason why I offset it to begin with and I'm not filling in the whole thing. So there's a little section. Let's go, oh, let's, let's continue that on over here a little bit. Okay. See why I put down my, see why I taped off my edges now? Because that border, I don't want any product on it and I'm a little messy. So that probably would be all purple on the border and I don't want that. No purple borders here. So you can put this on as thick or as thin as you want. If you notice when it's thin, you can kind of see through it. It's a little transparent. But when it's thick, you get a nice um, raised textured stencil. So I'm kind of doing a little bit of both. I'm doing some areas thicker and some a little thinner so you can see the foil through. So now let's do a couple more little organic areas like uh, down here. Okay, there we go. Do a little thicker right there okay boom and i think one more little small area for um balance would be great so maybe well let's just do a little small bit here for not symmetry but uh visual balance we need to balance out our purple here okay and like i said when this dries it's even more sparkly and it dries to kind of a plasticky finish so um yes this is my last step not I'm not gonna seal further than this. I already sealed, then we did our foil, and now I'm doing our icing paste. Um, and like I said, it dries to a very plasticky finish, washable type finish. So you can wipe it down, you can wash it. If you put it on clothes, I've put it on jeans before, and you can wash it, you know, on gentle, but. All right, so I think that's enough of our purple. If we decide we want more, we can let it dry and then add some more, but I'm thinking this is gonna do us. Let's have a look, see? This is my favorite part, pulling off the stencil. Now when I'm pulling off stick and styles, or any stencil really, not just stick and styles, I like to pull up and away, 
or you know away from my surface so I don't smudge it or at least <laughs> so I smudge it as minimally as possible so I'm gonna grab two corners or two edges or two corners here and I'm gonna pull up and away gently up and away mm, so I don't smudge okay and there we go so there is our icing paste um, so I taped off the edges not to get product on my borders but see how there's a little bit of edges that need to be cleaned up at the top here oh, how am I okay see these little kind of like mm, orphans we're just going to take um, a finger or a little cloth and I'm just gonna clean up the orphans mm, 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 mm. so we don't want no jagged edges on the corner so we're just gonna clean those up and then we're gonna let it dry. How easy is that? So um, this drawer will be completely done, except for, um, I might do a, just a hair of gilding wax around those borders, those edges um, that I just taped up. So I'm gonna take the tape off so you can see what I mean. Whoa. Okay, so. I may, um, after this dries, I may just do a little bit of copper gilding wax around a couple of the corners. So maybe like a bottom corner and a top corner opposite, just, just for a little bit of framing to frame in our um, pretty sparkly textured and let's see if you can see the depth of the icing paste on here. Can you see it or no? So that's my top draw, okay? Isn't that fun? And you can do the icing paste in silver or gold or green or blue or red. Uh, uh, you know, uh, gosh, there's all the colors. They're so pretty. So, um, yeah, that's my top draw. And uh, I don't know how we're doing on time. I was going to do some transfers on the sides, too. Um, I don't know if we have time for all that. Do we have time? Okay, so I'm at about 40 minutes. So, mm, oh, heck, why don't we do some transfers on the side? We'll do one draw, one draw side so you can... Um, see what that is going to look like with my transfers on the draw. Let's actually do the other draw though because it's dry. The draw is dry. So we're not going to mess it up. And if you missed it earlier, this is the bottom drawer. Um, I'm dry brushing gilding or uh, decor wax onto the details. Okay, so just to highlight them a little bit. And um, we're going to go ahead and do a drawer side with two different transfer, transfers that I chose. I'm gonna show you how to um, layer them and um, <clears throat> do, um, measure them for the drawer side. So there's a couple way, ways you can measure them. Um, and I'll show you. I chose, oh my gosh, Rose Celebration and Violet Hill. Do you know why? Because Violet Hill has purple and Rose Celebration has uh, peaches. And uh, my pour top, I did an epoxy pour top that has purple and peach and coral and all the colors. So um, I'm gonna start with my Rose Celebration because Rose Celebration is just a little bit transparent. So if I put down my Violet Hill and then I do Rose Celebration on top, you'll see right through the Rose Celebration. Um, so that's why I'm gonna lay this down first because it's just a little transparent. Violet Hill is not transparent. It's opaque, so it's not going to show, or at least show very, very minimally through to the bottom flowers. Does that make sense? So yes, there is a method to my layering. No, there's not a guide anywhere that tells you the opacity of the transfers. I just know from using them a billion times which ones are opaque and which ones are kind of transparent. So if you're not sure, you can always ask in the Redesign with Prima group, and if I see it, I will tell you the, you know, how opaque or not opaque the transfer is. So we're gonna start with this little patch of Rose Celebration, one of my favorites. This is one of my favorite little pieces of Rose Celebration. It's just the perfect size, it fits everywhere. So I'm going to, let's see, my drawer side, the way you're seeing it is up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out, I'm gonna cut off these little tan swirls because I don't really wanna use those in my design. Little tiny bits of them won't bother me, but. I don't really want those swirlies in my design. You can cut up your transfers to customize them as you please. That's part of the fun of using transfers. Sure, you can buy a transfer and use it exactly how it's supposed to be used right out of the can, but that's kind of boring. 
to me. Boring for me. Not boring looking. It's boring for me to do. I like to be busy. Busy, busy, busy. So cutting up and chopping transfers is my jams. Um, let's go ahead and cut out this little big fat floral guy here. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to find a little spot for him to live. Um, I'm probably going to push it up towards the front of the drawer like this. And um, what I'm going to do is have it spilling into this little corner. So I'm going to take my fingernail and you can use a Sharpie or a pen or whatever. Take my fingernail and crease where I want to cut it. Okay. And then I'm just going to cut it straight. Boom. So now make sure your surface is dust free. Okay. Okay. Cause uh, transfers won't stick to dust. Um, so let's see, we want to put it roundabouts there. Okay. And I'm going to, since I have just a little bit off, I'll probably just chop that off and pitch it. If it was a whole rest of a transfer hanging off, I would go ahead and cut it with my knife now. But, um, it's just a little bit, so I'm not going to keep it. I'm going to go ahead and apply this little bit. Right. Just like, I'm actually going to line it up with the, um, dovetail joints. I like those to show because I love me some dovetail joints. So you can line it up directly into the little groove of your drawer or wherever you want, but I like to line it up with the dovetail so they show. Got to get some of that purple paint off there. So now I'm going to rub it on in place and I'm going to take my sharp knife and I'm just going to trim off the excess. So if there's a couple ways to go about this, you can measure the size of your drawer and use a paper cutter or a knife or rotary cutter or whatever to cut that size of piece out of your transfer, okay? You can cut it to size first and then place it. If you get it on there incorrectly though, you're um, up Crap Creek. So I like to apply it and then trim it down. Works works for me. So that's what, what we're doing. So now I need my little transfer tool. We're gonna rub on our rose celebration little piece here. I'm just rubbing it directly onto the drawer face, which is uh, wood. You can apply it directly to paint, directly to cured stain. If you happen to have sealed your piece already, you wanna make sure that's completely cured before you try to add a transfer. If you've waxed it, you either wanna remove the wax with mineral spirits and steel wool, or let it cure for 30 days before you transfer. You can't transfer onto fresh wax. I've made that mistake before trying and it did not stick as you would imagine. So I'm gonna rub it on. The best I can, firmly, some, use them muscles, use them guns. You ain't got muscles for no reason. They're for applying transfers, right? Okay, rub it good all over. And then you wanna pick a corner to start peeling up. Okay, and you wanna make sure it's sticking. If it's not, just go back over it with your tool, lay down your acetate sheet and go back over it. So we're gonna keep peeling our acetate. Okay, so, and we're sticking, we're sticking, we're sticking. This is the older transfer, so it doesn't stick near as good as the newer ones. The newer ones <coughs> are manufactured a little differently and they are amazing. The old ones are amazing too, but not as amazing as the new ones as in terms of applying. The new ones are <laughs> easier, but we got this, we got this. All right, so let's finish applying this piece of rose celebration. There we go, and oh, that little guy don't wanna stick right there. Stay little guy, there we go. We're almost to the end of this little piece. Let's see. All right, there we go. So once you got your acetate cleanly removed from your transfer, um, you wanna rub or that fancy word burnish we were talking about with your palm or your finger or whatever. I like to use my palm. And you wanna make sure you go around the edges. You wanna make sure the edges are stuck really, really, really well. Cause if they're not and you get sealer, 
under them, it can cause them to lift and bubble and crack and roll and peel and all the things we don't want them to do. So you want to rub over it, pop any bubbles, smooth out any wrinkles, and get those edges nice and pressed down, okay? So rose celebration. Now we're going to layer on a little bit of Violet Hill. And then after that, um, it will need to be sealed. So once I have all the drawer sides done, I will seal with a clear satin sealer because I prefer satin. You can use whatever water-based sealer or um, polycrylic type sealer you want to. Just don't use an oil-based sealer. Oil-based will render your adhesive on your transfer useless and it will fail. All right, that's on there. That ain't going nowhere, okay? So now we're gonna do a little bit of Violet Hill coming at ya. If you have not seen Violet Hill or used Violet Hill, um, you need to. It's probably my, one. it's up there with top, top three of my favorite transfers. Violet Hill is amazing. It's got all these really pretty coral and pink and purpley colors and some white and some green. It's just so pretty. The colors are just so amazing. So I want to pull some of the purple flowers out of this transfer because um, my purple theme for my um, piece you know, I need some purple flowers, okay? So let's see, let's go ahead and, oh, maybe that one. I'm gonna go ahead and pick a piece that has a good chunk of purple that I like. And I think, I don't know, that one looks pretty good. For, oh, here we go, bounce it, bingo, boom. This is the piece we're gonna use right there. See that little piece right there? So I'm gonna, you know, gently pull it away from my other transfer sheets. Now you wanna be careful messing around with these like this because the backing paper is not stuck very well to the transfer sheet. So it, if it comes off and it rolls up on you, it will stick to itself and you'll be out without a transfer and you'll be crying. Talking about, I don't know what I did wrong with my transfer, it's ruined. So just be gentle and uh, keep your backing paper on your transfer so you don't ruin it. Then you won't cry. All right, so I'm gonna roll up the rest of my transfer and put it back in the tube so that I don't have any reason to cry. And what I wanna do is figure out which, oh man, that piece would be perfect too. Harsh. Um, we're gonna go ahead and stick with the original piece, this purple. So I wanna cut out this purplish area. I don't know about these pink flowers. I don't know if I'm gonna use those, let's see. Yeah, we can use those. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out here. Um, you wanna try to pick a chunk that has all of its parts. You know what I'm saying? So if we would have used this chunk, it's got these two hard lines, one on the top and one on the side. We would have had to finagle that and make the edges look a little more organically sliced. Um, you know, nobody wants to see your transfer on there and have hard lines like you cut it out and placed it. It shouldn't look like you cut it out and placed it. It should look like it came that way and it was supposed to be used that way. You know what I'm saying? Um, organic edges. And, you know, you want organic edges, not hard lines on your cuts. If you're going to cut and chop transfer, okay? That's the best piece of advice I can give you as far as making it look... Uh, as it was supposed to be that way, you know? So we're gonna go ahead and cut out our purple and our little pink flower here that we're gonna use. And I'm just cutting it around the leaves, around the flower, make it look natural, okay? I'm gonna lose these little green berries, I don't want those. We don't need no berries, we just want the flowers. I make such a mess, oh my gosh. Who has to clean this up? Cutting off the berries. We don't need those little berries. Okay, so boom, boom. Now I have my purple and pink flower. So I'm gonna try to angle that the best, most natural-ish looking way I can, like it was part of the rose celebration, not an afterthought. So let's see. Mm, how are we gonna, we could do it like this. We could do it from the top like this. Mm, what do you think? I think this little edge is a little too sharp. It needs to be rounded out a little bit. So we are going to do that real quick. 
Natural organic edges. I repeat, natural organic, not sharp, hard-lined edges. Boom. All right, so that helps. Mm, 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 mm. What do you think about, mm. why am I having such a hard time committing to a position for this? Okay, let's do, what do we think about this? Too close to the other ones? I kind of like it coming down from the top. Okay, let's do it coming down from the top like this. And then we can do the pink flower. We can move it over here. You know what I'm saying? So I will show you. So I want to line it up just like this. And then I'm going to take my fingernail and crease where I want to cut it off. And I'm going to go ahead and take, hmm, let's use our knife, our sharp knife. Okay. I'm going to cut or slice right on the edge here. Ah, hold your transfer on there still so you get a sharp, clean edge. Boom. Okay. So we've got that edge. And then I'm going to take this piece. I'm going to turn it right back around and I'm going to plop it right back there after I apply my purple flower. Is that freaking uh, magical or what? You can do whatever you want, create whatever look you want. We all have the same transfers at our disposal. Okay. So, um, since we all have the same designs at our disposal, how is it that we're going to keep from seeing the same exact design over and over and over again? We're going to get jiggy with it and customize our transfers. All right, so we're lining up that top edge. Boom, 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 boom. Just want to clean up this edge a little bit here with my knife. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to rub that on. Easy peasy. Now, when you're layering transfers and you're rubbing on a second layer, you got to be gentle and careful not to scratch your first transfer, okay? So it takes a little bit of, I like to go around the edge with the edge of my tool to make sure that it's adhered. And then I kind of fill it in like I'm coloring, you know what I'm saying? So I get to go around the edge and then fill in the middle. Just gotta be a little gentle. If you're in a hurry, I don't suggest doing transfer application until you have some more time. If it's not a process you wanna hurry through, I get used to hurrying because on these videos, nobody wants to watch a two hour tutorial. So um, I try to keep it fairly short and simple, but this one I tried to pack in a lot. So I'm working a little quick, but take your time, take your time, no regrets, okay? Boom. All right, so I think we're ready to peel up our acetate sheet and see our beautiful purple flower stick. Boom. See these new transfers with the grids on the back? That's how you know it's a new one. They stick so much easier. And to be honest, I think they're a little more resilient. The older transfers, I think, are a little brittle and they crack and they rip. They crack very easily. These newer transfers are more resilient. They have a little bit more uh, stretch, I would say. Okay, so you want to pop any bubbles, smooth out any wrinkles, go around your edges. And we got one more little flower to put on and then we'll be done with this draw side, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. So, I think this little guy should live either up here or down here. I think, I think we can put him right there, right? Or right there. Oh, I don't know. Let's put him right here. Space him out just a little bit. Give him some breathing room. All right, this is our last little piece on this drawer side, and then we're donezo. Donezo with this video. All right, so I'm gonna gently line him up with the bottom, his little bottom line there, up with the bottom. Mm, this way. Very picky on my placement here. Boom, okay, that's where it is. That's where he lives now, okay? Truthfully, I probably could have cut off a couple of these leaves because there's a lot of greenery happening right now, right there. Um, what I like to do when I see chunks like that, that I'm like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of green right there. I will go to the, my transfer and find a little flower like this, little uh, orphan, and I'll just plop him right there in the middle of that green to break it up. So I might do that, but that's a little tip for you. You know, um, 
some people are kind of born with the ability to see things like that, you know, like how to place and where to place and things that kind of are not consistent or don't look right. Some people really have to think about it and try really hard to do that. So, okay, I'm going around my edges, filling in the middle firmly. edges fill it in okay and I think we've done gone over our transfer pretty good and I'm just gonna peel up gently till I know it's adhered pull away boom 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 looking good looking good looking good okay boom so now I'm just gonna burnish it with my palm which means rub it in rub it in rub it in pop those bubbles, smooth out those wrinkles. Um, then I'm gonna seal it. I'm gonna use Dixie Belle cl uh, clear coat and satin. Uh, you could use clear wax, Minimax polyacrylic, variety of different water-based sealers. But you do wanna seal them. And boom, okay? So pretty much done. I may add a couple little orphan flowers just like these, like sprinkled throughout here to break that little space up a bit. But other than that, she's a she's done she's done on the side so we got some rose celebration we got some violet hill and then i'll have a couple little more flowers from rose celebration so um i got my purples and my peaches from my epoxy pour top and that's how i choose transfers really is i think what's the color scheme of my piece which transfers have those colors and what pieces can i cut out from those transfers to create the color scheme that i need um when there's not a transfer that fits that one color scheme Does that make sense mm. Well, you'll let me know if it doesn't. Ask me any questions, drop them in the comments. I will go back through later and I'll answer them. Um, thanks for hanging out with me on a Monday. Um, yeah, I hope you have a great rest of the week and I will see you right here in the Redesign with Prima group next Monday at noon EST. Bye.